Good morning and welcome back to the homestead everyone. So Sunday morning here, uh, we're going to go through and talk about the chicken coop. We get asked a lot about the chicken coop, you know, specifically what materials we used, how much we used, uh, dimensions, you know, basically a set of build plans. Uh, while we don't have an actual set of plans, we have some really good pictures that we took during the construction process. And uh, so we're going to go through those. We're going to go through the pictures. We're going to explain what we used, how we used it. Um, how much of it we used and then at the end we're going to do a wrap up video where we'll actually take a tape measure and go out and show you the lengths of each part and you know how they connect together you know get right down into the weeds on the details so hopefully at the end of this video if you wanted to build one of these you'll know you know roughly what to go buy you'll know how to cut it how to assemble it and you know how we built ours so as you see here in the picture this is a completed coop uh, last fall before winter set in and we're going to go ahead and, and move on through this. So first thing you have to start with is a dog. The dog is mandatory. Um, after that we used pressure treated 2x6's for the base. Our land was not leveled. If you, if you have a flat area that's ideal. You would only need 2x4's or 2x6's. We wanted to keep the pressure treated so that it was up out of the ground enough nothing rotted. You'll notice as we went forward we ended up using extra 2x6's and we'll put a material list in the description down below. We used a pile of half inch CDX plywood. Um, you could use other variants. Um, I wouldn't recommend something like OSB or anything like that uh, simply because there is a lot of moisture inside the coop and you'll see we did paint ours inside of some really good paint. And then because our building is in six foot increments one way and 24 the other way, it is eight feet wide, but the walls are six feet tall, we got quite a stack of 2x4 12s. Now this did use a lot of 2x4 12s. We'll put a, a quantity down below. We also got a lot of um, three inch Torx headed screws and some shorter inch and a half Torx headed screws for working on the plywood. We really like these ceramic coated Torx headed screws that we get from our local lumber yard. They make it very easy to put in, you know, you don't have that Phillips head slipping and stripping things out. Uh, just makes the process much more enjoyable. And a few other bits and pieces. So here you'll see what we did is we took our 2x6s and we screwed them together 24 feet long by using a scrap piece in the middle to overlap the splice and then what we did is we actually drove hardwood grade stakes in down the side and we screwed our 2x6 pressure treated to the grade stakes level so you'll notice in the corner closest to us they're almost you know flush with the ground we dug down in and down on the far end you'll notice is uh, it's too high um, we don't have the last one in at the end yet we were missing one 2x6 so we did go back and get that and put that in obviously but you'll see what we did there. We basically just used a second 2x6, cut at an angle, slid up under the first one to fill up the gap, and we braced them together with pieces of 2x4. And then, of course, we filled the inside of wood chips later. So that's how we accounted for our unlevel ground. You could have actually brought fill in and leveled that up. We just didn't feel the need to do that. And then what we did is we screwed two 2x4s together as an L, and stood that up in all four corners. You'll see the last one down there on the on the far right corner laying on the ground still not put in. And then we knew we wanted our coop to be eight feet wide and six feet long. So the first two by four towards where I'm standing now is actually six feet from the, uh, the corner. And this will become more important later. After that, the two by fours are spaced three feet on center. And the reason for that is we use three foot wide hardware cloth to you know go down through and cover that so that's why the three foot spacing again requirement is a very helpful dog so this is just another shot showing you that we now have you know it's showing you the splices you can see the taper in that two by six right to the right hand side of the dog there filling the gap and then you'll notice at the top we've laid a 2x4 on edge just like the 2x6 down below and we've toenailed up through the 2x6's, uh, 2x4's into the top 2x4 with our 3 inch Torx headed screws and we did end up cutting a brace in along that long wall to make it less wobbly, you'll see that in a bit. 
So now what we've done is the coupe itself that we built out of the half inch CDX, we're treating it like an exoskeleton. So the frame of the building is outside, the plywood is inside. So we came down from the top plate, we came down roughly four feet and we put our two by four on there so that when we go inside with our plywood, it's flush at the top of the two by four and flush at the bottom of the two by four. Then what we did is we put an eight foot piece of plywood on the end on the right hand side of the picture. We put an eight foot sheet of plywood on the other side of the coop that you can't see in the picture where the step ladder is. And then we cut two pieces that were five foot 11 to go on either side, the one that you see the sun shining on and the one towards the tractor you can't see. And that gave us a, a box for the coop, you know, the four walls. And then we went inside and even though it's a little bit more two by fours, we actually framed around the bottom of the coop inside the plywood of another layer of two by fours on the inside and then we put floor joists front to back you know from the side closest to the right hand side of the picture to the side where the ladder is uh, two feet on center and then we actually cut two more sheets of plywood and laid on that floor inside so there's just another shot you'll see I'm inside on that plywood now. And the reason we did that was it, it makes it easy to change that plywood that I'm kneeling on if it ever does rot out from you know, excessive moisture. You could use pressure treated there. I tend to not use a lot of pressure treated around the animals and stuff if I can help it. Uh, one thing that Carolina Coops does that we didn't do because we didn't have the access to it immediately. They use the uh, plastic sheeting um, inside. You could do that absolutely you could use some real heavy paints which is what we did we used a, an oil based poly based decking paint to really seal that all up inside but you'll notice what we did is we've gone ahead and we've made our door hole the size we wanted it and then we framed it with two by fours leaving a about a half inch of plywood inside the hole for the door to latch against now I will point out here as we go there's probably a better picture but it's at this point where I verged from the Carolina Coops and my left and right side of my door is straight all the way up and down and the reason if you look at the Carolina Coops design the bottom clean out door that tips down is narrower than the hole up at the top so this 2x4 that goes straight down from the top header down to the plate just to the right of the level there would actually stop you know about eight inches from the bottom and then step in a couple three inches and go back down again uh, the reason that he has designed his that way, and I have found out later, is with my design, if the doors, left and right doors, are not completely 180 degrees open, when you go to open that clean out door, it will catch on the door, and you have to just push those doors open. It's really not a big deal, and the simplicity of building it this way, I probably would still do it again this way in the future. It's just something I point out where we did verge from each other. This is just uh, another shot of me gracefully trying to get out of the chicken coop. And here's a shot of the inside. So one of the keys with a chicken coop, as you'll learn from the Carolina Coop uh, videos, if you watch a lot of those, is ventilation. Ventilation, ventilation, ventilation. Um, you cannot have enough ventilation in a chicken coop. So this is the hole for them to go out in the uh, outdoor run, the one right in the center, center-ish of the picture with the angled top corners and you notice it's about eight inches off the floor and that's because we're going to use the deep litter method and chickens can you know hop up eight inches easy anyways so we wanted to keep that up high enough that the deep litter doesn't spill out into the outdoor you know run and then we put two big windows on the left and right side and we put two littler windows into the outdoor run so you'll see one of the big ones and one of the little ones in this picture and we covered those with hardware cloth later on here in the video so there's just another shot of that looking in. You can see a little bit of the right-hand window as well. And now Sue's taking the time to start doing some painting on this. Um, one thing I would maybe suggest if I was doing this again is I might actually go ahead and lay my plywood out on the lawn and roll my paint or stain on it ahead of time. Um, it would just make it a little easier than getting in around all the nooks and crannies for brush. I, I probably would do that in the future if I was going to do that. You'll notice we also have the hardware cloth on the window. What we did is we actually put it on the outside of the plywood with a just a hand bostitch stapler using the 3-8 staple so they wouldn't go through the plywood. 
because uh, the staples are only there as a temporary measure. And then when we put that 2x4 on that you see around the um, hole, we use that to actually sandwich the hardware cloth around the window. There's just another shot showing the hardware cloth, you know, a lot better image of it. And there's a image of what it looks like from the outdoor run area looking in towards the coop. You'll notice that we framed the uh, door with two by fours. Uh, that hole, I believe, is about 12 inches wide, maybe about 10 inches wide and about 12 inches tall, but it's actually plenty big. We'll go ahead and we'll put a tape measure on that when we go out, because that is one of the one of the sizes you kind of need to know. The windows are really just whatever you can fit. Um, those are there's no no real such thing as too big on the windows. We struggled with the best way to cover these windows up for the winter. Um, we will link the video down below. We ended up just using a grade 2 polycarbonate panel from our local roofing supply place. They're really affordable. Um, the Carolina Coops design has a plexiglass window and a frame that goes down and closes in the hole. Um, that is nice, but we didn't really want to take the time to build those. We thought that just a handful of roofing screws and some polycarbonate panels. When we take them off in the summer, we'll take a black Sharpie and we'll write the location of each panel on the panels. We take it off and we'll just stack them in the barn. Same picture, just a different angle. So here, what you see is, you know, a little bit of a thousand foot view. You can see that we're got most of the wall framing done or all the wall framing done except for under the coop and you know the coop is all framed enough to floor it now and we're about ready to think about the roof at this point so we went with a 12-12 pitch on the roof uh, we did that for a couple reasons uh, one is that that 2x4 cut at a 45 degree angle top and bottom is just under 6 feet long so we're able to get two out of each 12 foot two by four. And at a 45 degree pitch or a 12, 12 pitch, whatever you want to call it, um, the snow sheds really well off that. So if you live in an area like we do in central Maine, where we get a lot of snow, one of my concerns here with outbuildings and stuff is, you know, if one of us is sick on the homestead or whatever the case may be, and we get a lot of wet, heavy snow, I don't want a lot of buildings that we have to worry about you know if I'm sick or I've got the flu or I've broken arm or leg I don't want Sue out there having to shovel off all of these outbuildings so they don't collapse so the 12-12 pitch really lends itself to that really good it also allows a lot of room above the roosting bars for the heat to rise in the summer and you know just a lot of ventilation so you'll see really it is pretty simple uh, one of the things if you're not real real familiar with carpentry haven't done a lot of building projects um, I'll leave some links down below but one of the things that you're gonna to want to get yourself is a speed square and I will uh, I will try to show that in the video when we do the wrap-up but it's a little six inch triangle that has a 45 degree angle on it and that makes cutting 45s really easy then what we did is instead of trying to be fancy and cut notches in the 2x4 to set on the top plate like you would in a house construction we simply set it right on the plate and you'll notice that we put a 2x4 between them. So we put the 2x4 up first, toenailed it in, then we slid our rafter up against it, screwed the rafter in. So as you see it now, we'll end up putting another 2x4 across the top of the plate to the left of that rafter and then our next set of rafters will go up. We also put our blocking in between the rafters instead of on top of the rafters for the metal roofing to screw down. You could at this point plywood this instead of putting the blocking in and shingle it if you wanted to shingle it. We chose metal roofing because it again the snow slides really well. You could strap on top of those with strapping and screw your metal down to it. There's uh, about 15 ways to skin the cat but this particular one works well. It's a little more time consuming in the long run but it's also nice because what we did is our rafters actually had those 2 by 4s screwed to them before they went up. So then we could take a rafter assembled as a complete V with four of those 2x4s on it and we could slide it up into place screw it left and right and then go across and toenail the blocks back in and we just kept building across like that. 
it's just a close-up shot of me you know putting a screw in it and you'll see what I mean like the one two by four in the picture here just above the window looks like it's at a funny angle that's because I haven't screwed it in yet so it's hanging down gravity's pulling it down a little bit and that just gave me something to push the rafter up against and you know hold it in place so here's a shot um, again those just those few rafters you saw but we've put the front overhang on it and all we did there was we screwed a t uh, ten and a half inch block to the actual rafter that we used on the face of the building and then we screwed another set of rafters out in free space into those blocks and then you'll also notice that more for decoration than anything I guess we put these vertical 2x4s these three vertical 2x4s across the top also what that allowed us to do is use up scrap half inch CDX to make the two gable ends in the coop instead of having to cut it out of a whole big sheet which with the price of plywood is, is you know pretty important you'll also see we have the clean out door in place here with a couple barrel latches and we'll try to leave a link to the hardware you know like on Amazon or something down below as well so there it is with the a couple more rafters up and the doors on so these doors, um, as you'll see in the video that Sue did on the uh, walk around of this coupe, we'll leave a link to that as well down below. These doors open up in two ways. The center opens up for ventilation, and then the whole door opens up to allow you to get in and out of the coupe. And those, the doors, when you open the little small doors, there's a hardware cloth on there to keep any animal from getting in there. The other thing you'll notice in this picture is we have some bracing left to right on the uh, walls to straighten things out so what we did is once we got our four corners in we leveled the ends of course the coop end stays level because of the plywood the other end down there you'll see has got a brace on it going up across and then we just sighted down with a string line down the wall and what you do is you take up here on this end of the wall closest to you in the picture and you put a nail on the face of the coop and you tie a, a circle in your string hook it over the nail run it down to the other end put a nail around the other end and you loop your string around and pull it tight in that and then you can go ahead and put like a half inch scrap of plywood under the string on each end and you can move the wall in and out down here in the middle where those braces are until you have that same half inch same picture just a different angle here it is with all the rafters up and the metal roofing on you'll notice that we did not put a fascia board on we didn't feel the need for a fascia board so you can see the on the front here right on the front right corner of the building on the roof you can see that little 12 inch block painted white up in there and the, the one up part way and then the one up at the peak and basically we just screwed our metal roofing down into those blocks all the way down through put our metal roofing cap on and we did not put any closures on the cap and what that means is there's a on metal roofing there are foam closures they're called that go under or over the roofing so down at the bottom of the roof down here where it ends at the drip line there's closures that go up under that to seal up those little ridges so that you can't see up in there now on the top there's closures that go under the ridge cap to close that up so that you can't see up under there we actually wanted that open because we want the ventilation again a little bit more ventilation to be able to go in and then of course the ridge cap being open at the top in the coop really allows that to ventilate you'll notice that uh, we've put some 45 braces on the uh, legs the four legs of the coop just to stabilize everything again and we cut in a 45 brace on the back wall in between the upright studs to brace that so it's a very solid and stable building at this point point. and here I am putting up the hardware cloth uh, I experimented with this for a while I have um, just a regular hand staple gun that shoots the staples you get at your hardware store uh, that was not really working well for me the staples weren't going in well as having to pound them in with a hammer so what I ended up doing is I got on eBay and I'll try to leave some links down below to that but I bought a quarter inch crown stapler on eBay and I was able to buy quarter inch crown staples also and I think I paid seventy five dollars for the stapler and the staples and that made life so much easier putting up this hardware cloth the uh, quarter inch we use quarter inch hardware cloth because at the time hardware cloth was a little hard to come by uh, due to covid and everything the carolina coops i believe uses half inch and he uses the black metal hardware cloth and that's key because when you get looking on ebay 
you will find hardware cloth that looks way too cheap compared to most of it and it is a plastic vinyl you know hardware cloth so you don't want that for a chicken coop because that's easy for a predator to chew through um, we just went with the quarter inch and we went with uh, galvanized because again we don't mind the look of the galvanized but if you're looking for it to kind of disappear the black hardware cloth really does you know disappear in that respect and you'll also notice here up above me that on every rafter we put a two by four side to side and that's called a collar tie and the purpose of that is to keep the building from spreading so you'll notice in the previous pictures the rafters were an upside down V and if you pile a lot of weight on those they by nature want to flatten down and become straight if you will and that would actually push the walls apart so to make that much more rigid you put these collar ties in side to side and that now makes a triangle and a triangle is very strong in that respect and now you don't have to worry about that and we did the chicken ladder uh, we went back and forth on this but because of the drop of our land and the amount of height we have we built this coop really tall um, as I said our studs are six feet tall meaning that the inside of the coop is about seven feet tall uh, we had a lot of space from the door where the little chicken is sitting right now all the way down to the ground and we didn't want a, uh, a plank that went the whole length of the thing I was skeptical on the chicken ladder I will admit but after watching Carolina Coop's videos for all winter and really thinking about it you know I said let's give it a try again we have all of this scrap laying around it doesn't really cost anything to try and boy the chickens use that like no tomorrow uh, I was really surprised at how quick they took to that and there's a shot of the hardware cloth looking at the chicken inside and another shot of the chicken ladder and this is before we put the shavings in it there's an outside view um, just another overall view of it you'll notice that we've planted some fruit trees on the sunny side our hope here is that these will get big enough in a couple of years to offer a fair amount of shade to the coop in the summertime and help keep the chickens a little cooler and at this point we don't have our predator apron in yet uh, we'll show you that in just a second okay so now you're starting to see the predator apron a little bit but you're also seeing that brace that I talked about so this, that white board that goes from the top left to the bottom right you'll notice I cut that in and fitted them between the uh, two by fours before I put that in there that end of the coop would move back and forth some not a lot but some and I'm I, I just wanted it rock solid I didn't want any question about it and here it is with the roosting box on there um, I didn't have any real good dimensions on the roosting box so we'll go over the dimensions when we do the tour here in just a second but the one thing we did that we are going to make a modification of ours is that we the hole into the coop itself is a little too tall and they like to pull all their hay and straw out and play with it in the coop and it just means you're filling the uh, the nesting box up a lot more often so we're going to put a board inside to help alleviate that and you also notice here we have our hardware cloth around the perimeter so what that is that is a two foot wide welded wire fencing that you get at Tractor Supply, Home Depot, any hardware store. It has I think about two by three inch squares in it. And what, what I did is the same exact thing Carolina Coops does is I used that same quarter inch crown stapler and gal, uh, stainless staples to staple that to the pressure treated bottom and then where they overlap in the corners I cut some of the uh, wire folded around itself and then I staked it down into the ground and then we covered it with about two inches of wood chips and the, the purpose of this is if you have a predator that wants to dig into your coop a lot of times that they'll they'll try to dig a hole and they're not really smart enough to know okay I hit something here I'm just gonna back up a foot and try again they'll move down a little farther and try again but they're gonna tend to dig right up near the coop and they're gonna keep hitting this wire and getting discouraged all the way around another another view of the predator rape and laying out still um, and some of the fruit trees and again the helpful dog and here you'll see the mulch has been put in place um, but that is pretty much a prerequisite you have to have a helpful dog to do this and back to the uh, back to the beginning so there's you know kind of the run through on how we did it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the video camera we're gonna go outside we're gonna show you what a speed square looks like 
and we're going to grab a tape measure and we're just going to go over some of the dimensions here but it, it really isn't rocket science it really isn't that big of a job if you will I mean you really just got to kind of pick away at it and you got to set the measurements to what you want for yourself the one thing I would do different and we will be doing next summer um, if you've watched any of our wintertime videos the door that we made here sets on top of the 2x6 <coughs> and with the snow and everything on the ground that door is now rubbing on the ground so next summer we'll end up cutting six inches off the bottom of that door and we'll put another 2x6 fixed in place on top of the one that's there just to shorten that door up and then we did also do a video on how to solar power the lighting system for the chicken coop um, you obviously don't need solar power you can run an extension cord out there if you want but we wanted to add some lights to the chicken coop so they will lay better in the winter so let's grab some warm clothes let's grab a video camera and a tape measure and let's head on outside all right so we got some warmer clothes and before we get started this is the speed square that i was talking about so if you're new to any kind of this carpentry work this is probably one of the most valuable tools you can buy and it, it allows you to mark a 90 degree square it allows you to mark a 45 it'll help you figure out roof pitches that are in between so just a very handy tool uh, we told you we'd sort of give you some measurements in around here and show you what we've done we as as i stated we went uh six feet high on our studs so we could just cut a 12 foot stud right in half <coughs> we did three foot on center spacing which means it's from this side of that stud to this side of this stud is three feet and that's so you can see right here there's a seam in the wire where one piece of wire and another piece of wire and then the wire ends halfway in the door so the last panel down of course we had to cut the wire for width so we started at six feet we went three feet and, you know we adjusted accordingly um, this side over here of course is three feet every panel because there's no door and then the hole we told you we'd get you a size we made our hole 12 inches by 14 inches tall and you'll notice we kept the piece that we cut out when the chicks are really really tiny um, we actually put a couple screws in here and put that piece in so they couldn't get out and they got to stay in there you know for a while before they uh, came out these are the 45 braces i talked about that we put on the coop these have no particular measurement to them that matters it's entirely you know what you have left for scrap these ones tend to be about 32 inches 45 on each end and you just you don't even really have to measure once you know this is level you just hold your brace up in there until both cuts are nice and tight and that tells you where you want to be um, Sue can maybe show you up underneath here a little bit because we didn't have a picture of this but that will show you the floor joists that hold the plywood up inside the coop and then if you look in through the door right here you'll see the uh, nesting box hole and that's the that's the hole we'll take some measurements when we get outside but we want you to see that in here and then the last thing I'll point out is the rafters and we talked about these boards here so how we did this is we took our rafters and we took them out on the ground on the flat ground out, out in the driveway and we screwed the peak of it together real well and then we come in on that same flat ground and we put well, it'll be this one actually because we started over here we put this board on at the right spot put two screws through the rafter into this board we put this board on and this board on and the three down the other side and what that let us do is bring that in here and set it on the building with those already in place and then when we set it in place we're able to screw it into these ones real easily so different ways of doing that the big thing is to make sure your building stays straight while you're doing it if i was to do it again and give you some advice I would make these collar ties right here you'll notice it's hard to see in the video but this collar tie goes up against this I'd actually make this go out the width of the building and I'd screw these three pieces together as a triangle out in the you know on flat ground and then I'd put this in a little bit shorter and that would just be easier for you from an assembly standpoint you could set up some piece of plywood and screw a couple blocks on it and you could just build all your roof trusses basically at that point 
So let's go ahead and measure the, the new uh, roosting box. So we came out about 13 and a half inches. We're about 12 inches here and we're about 16 inches there. We didn't put metal roofing on ours like uh, Carolina Coops because we didn't want the noise in there. We also made sure this opened, not the top. That's something that we took from Carolina Coops. Uh, we've heard that from several different people, but it doesn't scare the chickens as bad. They're, they're looking for aerial predators. So if you come in this way and open this up like this, you know, you'll see in here how we did it. And the mistake we think we made is this hole right here, I think is too big. And they're pulling this hay out like crazy. No matter how fast we put it in there, they're pulling it out. And then what ends up happening is they lay an egg over here where there's no uh, hay and it breaks. So this one's good, but you'll notice it's all covered with yolk from one that broke. So we'll grab the eggs all right here. But there's no right or wrong way to this, you know, whole size here. This is just convenient for us so we don't have to go in and collect eggs. That's all there is to it. We put a, another piece of 2 by 4 We put another piece of 2 by 4 here on the uh, plywood to stiffen it up. Uh, probably if I was going to do this again, I would use just like a one by six or something that was wide enough because that's pretty heavy and pretty big. Doesn't need to be that big. But other than that, you know, that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions or is there anything I can show you more up close, you know, on this and you want to see it, let me know down below in the uh, comments. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped. Don't forget to like and subscribe.